talk about me. Wow, it's the baby. What if there were no bees? A book about the grassland ecosystem by Susan Slade, illustrated by Carol Schwartz. Don't be fooled by a bee's size. It is tiny compared to the foxes, skunks, and owls that are its grassland home. But bees do the work of giants. Bees spend countless hours darting from flower to flower to collect pollen and nectar. Got four bees. And there's a little fox over here. Grassland plants and animals and insects are tied to one another by food chains. Bees, as well as other living things, belong to several chains. Many food chains are connected by one plant or animal to create larger food webs. So here we have the bumblebee and the bee will eat nectar, take nectar from the flower. So there's a chain link. A possum might eat a bee. A toad definitely would eat a bee. And the owl needs to survive on rodents, and here's a possum. So here is a chain, and it works in all these directions. So a spider might eat a bee, a bird would eat a spider, and a fox would eat a bird, and a mouse, and a mouse would eat honey, and a bear would eat honey. So see how they make chains? We're all connected. It's critical, it says. Did you know people are part of the food chain too? We are at the top of many different food chains. Flowers are a bee's best friend. They're often filled with a sweet liquid called nectar. Bees sip nectar to keep up their energy. Honeybees also use nectar to make honey. As bees collect nectar, tiny pieces of pollen stick to their furry legs. Right here. When bees visit other flowers, the pollen falls off. Flowering plants need pollen to create seeds and fruits. This process is called pollination. So if this bee went to this flower and then a different kind of flower, the pollen gets spread around. And that's what the flowers need to create seeds. As bees fly around to collect food, they face many dangers. Spiders, birds, toads, and other hungry predators hunt these hardworking insects. Pollution and some of the pesticides farmers use to protect their crops can also hurt bees. Mice often make unwelcome nests in honeybee boxes. While the mice aren't dangerous to the bees, they do damage the boxes and the bees' honeycomb. The smell of mouse droppings may cause bees to leave their hive for good. And this bird has a bee in his mouth and he's flying off. And this is a hive that is man-made, of course. And this says it's critical since 2006, more and more honey bee colonies are dying unexpectedly. Worried beekeepers aren't sure why so many colonies are disappearing. Some people believe bee diseases, pesticides, poor eating, and stress are harming bees' health. What would happen if bees became extinct? If there were no bees, farmers near grasslands would have a lot of trouble growing crops. Farmers need bees, especially honeybees, to help pollinate their fruit and nut trees. Apples, cherry, plum, avocado trees would produce less fruit, or none at all, without bees. Almond and macadamia trees would produce less, too. This says it's critical. Sometimes a plant 
or animal species is so important that without it, many other species could become extinct. It's called a keystone species. Bees are a keystone species. Keystone species help make sure an ecosystem has many types of life in it. So we need the bees. Fields of strawberry plants wouldn't be able to produce fruit. Neither would blueberry plants. Without bees, there would be fewer carrots, onions, and other vegetables. Bees are major pollinators of many fruit and vegetable crops. It's critical. Honeybees pollinate about 90 different crops in North America. They help create about one-third of the food we eat. Some farmers hire beekeepers to bring hives of bees to pollinate their fields. The bees stay a few weeks and then they are moved to another field. Grassland wildflowers and other plants couldn't make seeds without bees. Flowering bushes in nearby forests couldn't grow berries for birds. Soon many mice, squirrels, and other small animals would not have enough food to survive. With fewer small animals, larger animals would be in trouble too. Foxes, owls, and other meat eaters would have a tougher time finding food. Honeybees make honey from the nectar they collect. Bears, skunks, mice, and ants love the sweet honey. It's an important food source for them. Without honey, these animals and many others would suffer. About one-fifth of the black bear's diet comes from honey, plus the fruits, nuts, and berries pollinated by bees. Without bees, black bears would be forced to move to new areas in search of food. Without bees, grasslands and nearby farms and forests would become less colorful places. Fewer truckloads of fresh fruit and vegetables. No flowering plants blanketing the wide open fields. No bright berries or crunchy seeds for the forest animals to eat. What would happen if bees became extinct? All kinds of things. The loss of one small creature, even as small as the bee, can have a huge effect on the ecosystem of our world. Today, scientists are studying bees closely to learn how to keep them safe and healthy. Farmers are finding new ways to control pests. All this hard work should mean more bees buzzing around in the future. That's good. Bees live on every continent in the world except Antarctica. They live in all kinds of ecosystems, including desert, tundra, and forest. This book focuses on bees in the grassland ecosystem. So here's North America and South America. Wherever it's yellow are the grasslands. Africa, Europe, Asia, and Australia. That they read on. Well, that was very interesting. Hope you enjoyed a bit of science. I wonder what's up now. Click on Tomsky to subscribe. Yes, we do have a website and we are on Facebook. Look for more info down below.